Hey there, Susie. This is Mario Delgadillo. Uh, sorry it's taken a little longer to put this presentation together for you today. It has been absolutely bananas. Um, as I'm sure you're probably aware, uh, the market has not been very nice to people in the last couple of weeks. And so uh, that means I've been really busy with a lot of people who are trying to protect uh, their retirement. And so with that being said, uh, this presentation is actually not intended for clients. Um, it's actually a presentation that I've done for years as a training for my agents. Uh, but I think it does a really good job of helping people give a very clear, very simple understanding of what an annuity is. So all you need to know about annuities, let's go ahead and dive into the information. So a little bit of history. Um, annuities can be traced back to the Roman Empire. Okay. In fact, uh, remember, all an annuity is, is a promise to pay contract between an insurance company and an individual, okay? Almost like a promissory note. Now, in 1812, the, the first U.S.-based annuities were issued, and in 1905, Dale Carnegie used annuities to create the teacher's pension fund. In fact, he said, I have therefore transferred to you and your successors as trustees $10 million to provide retirement uh, retiring pensions for teachers of universities, colleges, and technical schools. And that was Dale Carnegie, April 16th, 1905. So uh, annuities have been around a long time, but here's the problem. Uh, so many of them have a bad rap. And it's really because of people like uh, Mr. Dave Ramsey's and Susie Arman here, because they have a very big audience. And if you don't know who they are, they're, uh, you know, uh, very big, very well-known financial analysts that have YouTube channels and talk shows and podcasts. And uh, they talk really bad about annuities because of variable annuities. And I'm going to break this down for you in a minute, but a variable annuity um, is, is, is a bad move for a number of reasons. By the way, I have never sold a variable annuity and I probably will never sell a variable annuity, okay? So a couple of reasons why they are not good. Number one is risk. Your money is still in the market, just inside of an annuity. Uh, because of that, they're loaded with fees. And in the past, many bad agents um, have used and put too many clients into these particular vehicles in order to just get big commissions. So I always want to say, let's call a spade a spade, and that's really what it is. The Anything that is out there in the marketplace that is negative in regards to annuities, it's going to be because of variable annuities, okay? So that said, there are three types of annuities, okay? We just said variable. We talked about that. Um, but we've got a fixed annuity, which means you're going to get a fixed rate, 2 3 or 4%. Uh, very much like a CD almost. Then you've got indexed, and that's what we proposed to you. So your money inside of your annuity will grow based on the value or performance of an external index. So it's almost like it's mirroring it. So if you have 100,000 and the S&P 500 goes up 10%, you'll get 10% credited to your account. If that index goes down, you don't lose anything because your money doesn't go down. Remember, indexing means that it's protected against loss. And then once again, variable there. I don't sell those. I don't recommend them. So we're not even going to touch them. Okay. So before we move further, I want you to be well aware that there's two types of money that you can actually fund uh, an annuity with. The first is what we call qualified money. And the second is non-qualified money. What is the difference between the two? Well, uh, qualified money is basically money from a tax-deferred account, like a 401k, an IRA, or a 403b. Then you've got qualified, non-qualified money, which is basically money like cash, right? So money that you fund from a CD or maybe the sale of a property, but it's basically cash and this money has already been taxed. So now the next is what we call, uh, uh, next bit of information is just a little bit more of understanding on what we are proposing for you. So an immediate annuity, also known as a SPIA, okay, stands for a single premium index annuity. So what happens is we roll over a lump sum into the annuity, okay? Now income payments, depending on which one you set up, can start right away, which is what we proposed for you. Or you could wait a little while and start taking income payments later, right? And the cool thing about this is that they're guaranteed. See, when you have money in an IRA, 
Okay, you don't have retirement income. You're just basically liquidating money out of an account, hoping that it doesn't run out. When you have a, a, an annuity, you actually are looking for guaranteed income for the rest of your life. Now, the second type of annuity is a DIA. Okay, now that's a deferred income annuity. Basically, you can fund this with a lump sum or you can make a, a series of payments into this. And what's happening is these payments usually start at least one year later or down the road, multiple years later. And this income is also guaranteed. Now, the last one we're going to talk about is fixed annuity, and that basically means that you're going to get a fixed rate and your money grows tax deferred. Uh, a fixed annuity is kind of like an alternative to a CD. Very safe, very steady, but you're really never going to grow, but you know exactly what you have every single year, every single month. Uh, and then guaranteed income payments on this one as well. So before we move forward, let me clearly... Um, distinguish between a market strategy and an index strategy. So a market strategy basically means that your cash is, you actually own investments, you own stocks, you know, bonds, mutual funds, and they are set inside of an account, right? Like an IRA or a 401k, 403b, right? These are market strategies. So when the market goes up, you make money. When the market goes down, you lose money. Now, the second is indexing. So they differ because in a market strategy, your money is in stocks in an account. Indexing strategy, your money is money. It remains cash inside of an account. In, in this case, it's the fixed index annuity. So the only thing you can do is go upwards with the indexing strategy, but you can never go down. Whereas on the marketing side, market strategy, you go up and the market goes up, you go down when the market goes down. So what is indexing, okay? So you're gonna choose an index like the S&P 500, right? The NASDAQ, Barclays, the IBC balance that's at five or 10. There's over 700 different indexes. So you select one. And since your money is not in the S&P 500, you get a return based on the performance of the index. So if the index does good, you get the return. But since your money's not in it, if the market goes down, you don't lose anything. Uh, your money grows, however, uh, the index performs. So however the index performs, it grows um, up to a cap or a limit if applicable. And what I presented to you has no cap. So a lot of these indexes will provide you a guarantee on the bottom and say, we'll make sure that you never lose. Your ground floor is zero, but we're going to cap you at 12, right? The one that I that I presented to you through FNG has no cap. So you can grow to the moon. Um, and you will earn complete downside protection from market downturns. It's like I said, like having a guaranteed floor of zero on the bottom, okay? So what does an index uh, do for you? Number one, historically, it's going to give you at least a 7 to 8% annual return, plus what I presented to you uh, has a bonus on top that is given to you by FNG. So it's 8 to 10% where the bonus brings it to about 10 to 11%. So you're going to actually be able to get some great growth protection from market downturns because we have a, a ground floor, no contribution limit. So there's no none like that, no age restrictions, no RMDs. And you basically have access to your money starting at year one um, or year two, depending on which product that you select. And there's no fees. Okay, I don't know if you remember the very first conversation that we had or the video that I recorded for you. Uh, there was it shows the difference between zero fees and how how you can grow, and even when you're being charged 0.95 percent, under one percent, how much of an impact that makes on your money. Basically, giving money away uh, just for housing it somewhere. Now, indexes uh, and how they work. Yeah, indexed and fixed annuities uh, have zero fees and expenses. Some are capped, are and uh, with uh, some are uncapped with unlimited upside. And some companies will even give you an upfront bonus. So some companies will, when you roll over your amount, they'll give you a one-time upfront bonus for doing that. And others don't give an upfront bonus. They give an annual bonus, uh, which you can have every single year for the life of the contract. We elected to go with that one. You actually make more money long-term as you uh, get bonuses on an annual basis. Uh, so a couple of really cool things. Remember, through your first 
um, 10 years, you have access to 10% of the money. After 10 years, you can take as much of it out as possible. But if you go over the 10% in the first 10 years, you're going to get a surrender charge. Well, how? Uh, there are a couple of ways that you can waive those surrender charges. So number one is this. If you ever require home health care services, you have to have somebody come over the house to help you because you're unable to perform two of the six daily activities for living for at least 60 days, then you can have free access to all the money, even above 10%. Uh, you've got terminal illness. So if you were ever uh, given a life expectancy of 12 months or less, then surrender charges don't apply to you anymore. Uh, and then finally, if you were ever uh, put into a nursing home uh, and you had uh, for, for 60 days or more, then the also the 10% uh, surrender charge does not apply to you as well. So pretty cool. Now, let's compare apples to apples. This is pretty important. So right now, 401k, 403b, and IRAs, right? This is the variable market. This is where you're at versus the annuity, fixed index annuity. So this is, like I said, not a retirement income. It's just an account, and you just so happen to take money from it to use towards income, whereas on the annuity side, they're guaranteeing income for life, and they're actually putting out a strategy for you. Uh, this has high fees. This one has no fees, except if you elect to build in any riders, which we did not. Uh, they're both tax deferred. So to make this move, Susie, it does not impact you at all. Okay, it's not going to impact you from a tax perspective. You're not going to have to come out of pocket. It's just filling out an application and basically processing a wire from one account to another. Now, this is very important as well, though. When the IRA or 403s um, get taxed when you pass away, there's two taxes. There's a death tax and an inheritance tax, where on this side, the beneficiary pays taxes only on the difference between the principal and the current value. So wherever it's grown, that's what you pay taxes on. And this last part doesn't apply because it's basically saying if you try to access your funds before 59 and a half, there may be some tax implications. Obviously, you, you know, you're older than 59 and a half, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, these are ones that I really want you to pay attention to. And this is where we talk about safety. How safe is the insurance industry as opposed to the banking industry. So first off, we want to make sure that one thing is clear. The annuities are not FDIC insured, but, or I should say, however, compared to commercial banks and investment firms, life insurance companies' solvency record has been nearly flawless, even during economic times. So even though they're not backed by the FDIC, they have completely outperformed the banks over the last, you know, at least 150, 200 years. A large percentage of life insurance companies actually have been around for over 100 years. And in 2008, during the financial crisis, during the crash, only one life insurance company became insolvent. That was AIG, while 465 banks uh, went upside down. Very important. Now, this one here is uh, is like like magic, right? This is the one that makes makes people go, wow. Okay, so instead of federal regulation, each state has an insurance department who's responsible for enforcing strict regulations on life insurance companies. One of which is the strictest and most important requirement. It is the dollar for dollar reserve. So. They require insurance companies to keep at least $1 for every $1 that they guarantee, right? So if they guarantee your $400,000, they're required by law to have $400,000 sitting in the bank at all times. How does this differ from banks? Well, banks are not required to keep such reserves. In fact, banks are only uh, required to keep 10% for every $1. So that's a dime for every $1. So if you have $400,000 in the bank, right, they only have to keep 10% of that in the bank. That's a scary thing. And that's why banks are so strong and have performed um, over the course of 250 years uh, way higher and at a better level than the bank. So that's really all I've got for you today. This is just another bit of information to help you to build some more confidence to help you to understand why this is a good fit for you, not just now, but for long-term, especially because we want to still be able to use our money, grow our money, get right, protect our money. And when you do pass on, I know you wanted to leave a little legacy um, 
to the children. And uh, and so this is the way that you accomplish it. Okay. Uh, I hope you're able to see this tonight. If not, um, hopefully you'll be able to watch this before our phone call tomorrow at 12 noon. Otherwise, God bless. Have a great night and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.